Hi guys, Sandy from The Paddle School here. In this video today, we're gonna to do another racket skill session, this time for two people. It doesn't necessarily have to be another person that plays paddle. So in my case, I'm gonna use my wife. She's gonna come in and do some of the exercises with me. But if there's two people that play, you can just take turns, maybe you do it for 30 seconds or 45 seconds and then rotate. So the first exercise we're gonna do is a balance exercise. So I'm gonna stand on one leg and she's gonna throw me difficult feeds that I have to volley back into her hands. And with all of these exercises, the aim is to show good control of the racket head. This is a good balance exercise. And to begin with, you can just throw one to either side. It's easier if it's just slightly to the side of the body. And then the person can make it more difficult by throwing high balls or low balls. If you want to challenge yourself more, you can put your foot on an uneven surface or a pillow or something like that to challenge your balance and that will make it a little bit more difficult. This is a good little exercise to do as part of your warm up as well. It's great for coordination and if you can even do this before a game, even better. Next exercise we're gonna do where you split between the cones and then come forward for a volley position. First one catching on your racket and then second one hitting back to your partner. Now both of these are great for racket control because really you want to be able to control that ball so you hit softly to the hands of your partner. For all of these exercises, it's controlled back into your partner's hands instead of trying to hit a ball faster then, which is great practice for your touch on the paddle court. I've put the cones out as a point to come back to, but if you don't have any cones, that's no problem at all. You just split step, come forward, and then catch the ball on your racket like a volley. This is really about racket control here. You want, no matter how difficult it is, you want to be able to catch that ball without many bounces on your racket and then just roll it back to the person who's throwing for you. Then with the volley, I've stationed the cones a little bit further away, so you've got to come forward a little bit more, and that way you split step, come forward, little block volley back to the hands. And the good thing here is again about racket control, making it easy for the person to catch, and in order to do that, you have to have good racket skills and control. Next is a shadow shot followed by a block volley. Now this is something that is specific to on court where you might play that ball after the back glass or deep by the glass and then you hit a chiquita and follow in for the next one with a volley. Really, you can put that cone wherever you like and the distance can be whatever you like as long as it's specific to paddle. So here you've got a lot of variation. You can move that cone around and they can throw from different angles as well. And again, you're showing the control of the racket head blocking that ball back to your partner. So here we're doing a shot by the back glass you're picking up, then come forward to the volley, trying not to step on your dog. But you can see here that it's very paddle specific. I get low for that ball at the back, I then push forward, come up the court and then block back. And as I'm blocking back into hands, I know I have to keep it under control. And now we're doing it with the bandeja. So I shadow the bandeja, come up, catch the ball on the racket. And really you can do this from anywhere. Like I said, you can do it with a low backhand, a low forehand, a bandeja. Even if you wanted, you could do a tots and smash followed by a second ball. And you've got the option of either catching it on the racket or volleying back to your partner. The more variation, as long as it's paddle specific, the better. The next exercise is pointing to the cones and you have to respond. Now here I've set it up like the corner of a court so you would have to move in a kind of L shape but really you can put those cones wherever you want and it can be a good agility exercise where your partner's pointing, sprinting to each of the cones. Like an agility exercise, probably 30 to 45 seconds is max for this because you want a maximal effort and if you can do the shadow shots at the same time then it's going to make it more realistic to paddle. This is a great little exercise to do at home or if you're on court, it's basically you're responding to visual cues and reacting to where they point and you're trying to make it paddle specific. You can see here I'm in this forehand corner and I'm moving around as if I'm in that corner now, coming up for short balls, playing near the back glass. And again, you can use it as a good speed endurance exercise that you can put it into a circuit if you want. If there's two players, then you do this one at a time for maybe 30 to 45 seconds, but you can see that it's very paddle specific. The next exercise is a blocking reaction drill and this is something where your partner they can get their own back for roping you into this in the first place but they throw it quite fast and your aim is to try and block it but block it back with control. Instead of blocking firing it back to them you want to be able to if you can hit softly on that ball so that they're able to catch it afterwards. This is a good way of making it reactive so throwing underarm or throwing overarm at the partner We've got to remember this is constructed, yeah? so you want to throw fast into the body and then react. And the good thing is, is you're also trying to control that ball, not hit too hard because you've got to hit it back into your opponent's hands. You can also do this volley to volley if you both play paddle. 
The last exercise, I get the wall involved. Now you can see I don't have a lot of wall space. So here I get the person to go closer to the wall and to throw, but really you can vary this, either the speed at which they throw into the wall, but also your distance from the wall. You can practice at the beginning, having a bit of space, allowing it to come off and hit their hands. And then after that, practice taking it quickly off the wall and still trying to get the accuracy back into your partner's hands. So we're practicing here as if the wall is a side glass and they're throwing in. I mean, this is pretty much the majority of your returns when it hits the side glass you want to give it space and be able to control that ball so it's good that you're now controlling that into the hands of your partner you could even turn this into a bit of a back glass where you actually throw a little bit more horizontal into the wall and now you can see here i'm getting the racket closer to the wall so i'm practicing taking it early off that side glass all of these exercises can be adapted to what you have at home. You might have a perfect corner in your garden that you'd be able to throw the ball into and you can practice with the double glass as well. Or you might have a little bit more space, in which case you can make the drills all a little bit longer. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't seen the first racket skills, that will complement this one and it's definitely worth a watch.